Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. In the second half of this two-part lesson on chromatography, I'm going to cover gas chromatography. This topic was suggested by Ibtissam Adam, Emily Coltman, Arif, Arif XIAI7 Islam, Pedgy16, Jack Lan, James Sharp, Max Beasley, Cristiano Jepsen, English Gent, Laura Snape, and the MacBeast TMB. Thanks guys. If you've got a topic which you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. If you're studying the AQA specification, the OCR specification, or the WJEC higher tier specification, you also need to know about gas chromatography. It's really similar though to paper chromatography, which I looked at in the last video. You can click here to watch that video if you haven't seen it already. So although it's a bit more complex and it uses more expensive equipment, Basically, the principle is the same. Instead of a piece of paper, what you have is a column packed with a solid. And instead of a liquid solvent like water or ethanol, what you have is a gas. And that gas is what carries your different substances along this column. Now, if you're doing the 21st century OCR course, then be aware that the solid in the column that is the stationary phase and the gas moving along the column carrying those different substances with it that is the mobile phase so the gas moves along this column and it's often put into a coil like this just to save space and as it moves along this column different substances travel along it at different rates because they're carried at different rates the same as different things moved along our piece of filter paper at different rates some got to the end before others the speed at which they move along here is our, the way that we identify which different substance which we're looking at. So you'll have some that come out before others and they all end up separated out. And the good thing about doing this is you can use quite a long column and so you get a pretty good separation. In fact, the separation between those different substances just depends on how long your column is. The longer the column, the better the separation they'll be. So this is a bit more of a sensitive technique than just using paper. It's still very rapid and it's still relatively cheap to do and it still can be used on very small amounts of substances. So if you're at a crime scene and you've got samples of say blood and you want to discover what might be in that blood, something like this can be used to identify the compounds in it. Rather than looking at the distance that these compounds get along the column, what we do is time how long it takes for them to get to the end. And so the one which is moving fastest will get to the end first, and then the next one will get to the end, and the one which is moving slowest will get to the end last of all. And there'll be some sort of sensor at the end which detects when those compounds are coming out of the other end. And basically what we'll get is a series of times. So we'll get a time for the first compound, a time for the next compound, and a time for the next compound, and so on. Usually this is represented on a graph, and the graph might look something like this. So the horizontal axis here is just time. And that time, again, that is going to relate to what the different compound is. You can see on this graph, we've got three peaks on it. So that means in our mixture here, there were three different compounds. And we can just read the time that they came out of the mixture from here. So in paper chromatography, we look at the height that those different substances have moved and we match it up to known samples of whatever we're investigating. And where we get a match, we say that it's the same compound. With gas chromatography, then we're doing pretty much the same thing, but what we do is time how long it takes the compounds to get to the end of this tube or this column. And as they get there, we can detect them and we'll plot them on a graph next to the time which they were emitted from that column. Now there's one final step which you need to know about, and this is a foundation tier step because this is really a get that C video for most of you. The final step is we can hook the other end of this tube up to a mass spectrometer. This is something which identifies the mass of the compounds coming out of the other end. And from that mass, we can start to figure out what those compounds might be. That's all the detail which you need to know for the foundation tier on most exam specifications. On the higher tier, you need to know a little bit more detail about that, and I'm going to cover that in a later video. I hope that video really helped you. To see what else I can help you with, there's lots more videos to check out on my channel. 
Scroll down the main page there to see I've already sorted them into playlists to help you find the video you need. You can also check out my revision guides which cover everything you need to know for the exam. They feature links to my videos, revision tips, cover both foundation and higher tier, and unlike a lot of revision guides, they also point out what you don't need to waste time learning. If you want to check your learning, try the Snap Quiz website and app, which allow you to identify which areas you need to spend the most time learning. Remember, this is the only YouTube channel which brings you the teachers, the textbooks and the tests all on your terms, on mobile phone, tablet or computer for you to revise when you want and how you want, even immediately before you go into the exam. All of these links and any others for this video will be down in the description. Lastly, it really does help my channel if you want to leave your likes, if you subscribe, or, if you know someone else who's having trouble, tell them to search for Mr Thornton. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.